Okay, so welcome to part five of this six part tutorial series I've been putting together on YouTube. If you haven't already seen the first four parts where we do the modeling, making the character, rigging, white painting and texturing, go check that out. But this is going to be part five where we do our animation and I'm going to you know, touch a key few. So this scene you see here is actually my original, but the one we're making here is pretty much the same. I am going to be having a bonus part on my Patreon, which is part seven. That's just going to show you how to do the sprinkles and the simulation of the skirt here but most of this is going to be the free stuff is going to be on YouTube and you can make a final result of that just fine but if you want to support the channel feel free to check out the patreon below and I also have the blend files on there that I'm going to be putting on there when this is all done for you guys to download as well including this original one here so uh, go ahead if you want to if not just keep watching so let's get started okay so in the previous part we were able to do most of our textures for our character and in this part we're going to do some animation we're also going to set up some of the things in our scene i'll show you how we do the floor animation in a way that it's loopable so let's go back to our layout and uh, remember in the previous part we put everything on its own collection so the light and the stage we can just untick that or just click on a little eye to hide it as we don't need to see that the thing we want to see now in fact let's just select the camera and just delete it the only thing we need to see now is our main collection that has a character on it and our rig collection. So just bring back your rig. Okay, so now we have our rig and we have our character and we're going to do a little bit of animation. Um, you could go into the animation workspace here. For me personally, um, I just usually work in the layout. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, the only reason I'd work here in the animation is when I want to work with the curves at the same time, but we're not going to be doing that today. So just the layout should be fine. So select that rig and what you're going to do is you're going to go into pose mode. And uh, in the previous parts, we did go into the pose mode to try out our character, but now we can actually do the animation. So we're going to come over to frame one. Make sure you're on frame one on the timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and press free on our keyboard to go into the right orthographic view. So make sure up here it says the right orthographic view. And what you're going to do is you're going to select this um, IK for the foot, so the left IK bone. And um, you can actually see what's selected by going over here to the bone properties. You can see foot IK.L. You're going to go into your right orthographic view and you can go G and move that IK bone back like this. That, and what you're going to do is you're going to select the body bone and you can go G and, and Z. So G, Z, and just bring that body Body bone down to bring the body down and then just bring that IK down even further so just something like that just bring that foot down and what you could actually do as well is you can just select this um, foot bone over here not the IK but the foot bone on the left foot and you can go R to rotate it and then rotate this toe bone up and then move that IK just up a little bit so just like that and then you're going to select the right IK bone for the foot you can see foot IK dot capital R go into your right orthographic view and then go G and move that one forward, maybe even just a little bit more. Make sure it's sitting on the floor. See that uh, line there? Look around, make sure it's sitting on the floor. You don't want it embedded or too high. So just something like that. Maybe just bring that body up just a little bit higher. And then you're gonna press A to select everything. You're gonna go I, and you're gonna insert a location and rotation keyframe. Make sure to do that. Okay, so now that you have that done, what you're gonna do is with everything still selected, you're gonna go Control C, and Control C is gonna copy everything or all of the positions here and you're going to go up to frame eight so make sure you go up to frame eight here and you're going to go control shift v or command shift v and that's going to paste in an inverse so it, the invert of what we copied here on one is going to paste it here and you're going to go i and you're going to insert a location and rotation keyframe on frame eight so what we have now is on one, we have this, and then on eight, we have the inverse. And that's why we have the dot L and dot R extensions, because it also helps with animation. And also just for the meanwhile, let's just go to our end frames here, just make it 16 for now. That's all we need to see. So you can see what we have here. We have on frame one, this, and on frame eight, this. All we have to do now as well is come here to frame four, and on frame four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the body bone, and we're gonna go G and just move it up. We're gonna select the left foot, IK. I'm going to go G and bring it up. Maybe rotate it a little bit like so, right about here. And then we're going to take that other foot, the right foot bone, and we're going to go G, move that IK back. And we're going to rotate it down a little bit. And we're going to select that toe bone and rotate it up till it's on the floor. So just about there, as you can see. Then we're going to hit A to select everything. We're going to go I, and we're going to insert a location and rotation keyframe. So what we should have now is that. See that little like that. Okay, I know it's quite fast. But you can see what's happening. It's doing a little step like this. It's still not perfect, but it's getting us roughly where we want to be. In fact, just for now, let's just take um, this 
Make sure everything is selected and just take that keyframe on frame eight, take it up to 10, and then take, drag, click on this keyframe and drag it up to five over here. Okay, that's a little bit better. So now we have that. And let's increase our end frame value to 20. So this step here um, can be made to look a lot nicer by doing a few extra things. So for a start, let's go to frame one and let's go into our front orthographic view by hitting one on a number pad. And let's grab this body bone and we're gonna go R to rotate. I'm gonna give it a little bit of rotation and we're gonna go G and just move it up slightly and we're gonna go I and insert location and rotation. In fact, make sure to select all of the bones and then go I and insert a location and rotation. In fact, maybe I'll just grab that body and just bend it a little bit. It's maybe too much, so something like that insert those keyframes and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to frame four and on frame four you're going to select that body again you're going to r to rotate it a little bit as well so just about that much and let's just select that foot ik over here let's just go g and just bring it down just a little bit like that maybe move it to the side and then press a to select everything go i and insert a location and rotation keyframe and then go over to frame 10 and on frame 10 what you're going to do is select the body and rotate it this way and then go G to move it up slightly. And then press A to select everything, go I and insert a location and rotation. So now we have a little bit of that back to forth like that. Okay, so now you can see we have that kind of lean. Okay, make sure all of the bones are selected and now we're gonna go to frame five. With everything selected, we're gonna go Control C to copy the pose and we're gonna go over to frame 15 and we're gonna go Control Shift V or Command Shift V. And that's gonna paste the inverse of frame five and we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here while everything's still selected, click and drag to select frame one, shift D, we're gonna take that keyframe and drag it all the way up to frame 20. So now if we hit the space bar, we should have a looping walk cycle. Now it's not perfect, but it is roughly what we're looking for. At this point, what you can do is you can take the tray and keep this in mind. It's very important that whatever changes you make to the first and the last frame are exactly the same. Otherwise you're gonna have um, skipping issues. Anything in between there, you can randomize. It doesn't have to end and start the same way because remember, we're trying to make this loopable. So let's come over then to frame four. And on frame four, we're gonna take this tray and we're gonna go G and move it down just a little bit and just rotate it. And we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. So now the tray moves a little bit and we're gonna go over to frame eight. We're gonna go R, rotate the tray a little bit, G to move it up a bit. We're gonna go I, insert a location and rotation. And we're just creating these random jiggles. Let's go to 13, rotate it a little bit, G to move it up. We're gonna go I, insert location, rotation. Only with that tray bone selected at the moment. And we're gonna go over to, let's go frame 18. And let's go R, rotate it slightly and go I, insert location and rotation. So now you can see that tray has a little bit of a jiggle to it. And in this case, it might be a little bit extreme, but you know, you can always smooth things out a little bit. And you can notice here that the legs have a little bit of a funny bend in them. See that? Right over there. Now, the way I solved that with my original was to put in some of these target bones for the IK system. That's really simple to do. You can look, there's a lot of different tutorials on that, how to do a leg rig. So I didn't cover it in this part, but I will put this version of it, the, the character on my Patreon. You can check that in the description, but you really don't need it. Um, we should be able to get away with it in this case. So that's looking pretty okay. And if you wanted to at this point, you could leave it at this. Um, what I did is I took the, um, the little mouth bones and in between um, the first and the last frame, in between here, I just did little adjustments with it where I made them smile and I you know, made them, the mouth do things. I took the eyes and I jiggled them by adding different keyframes. And that's something you can do yourself. You don't, um, I'm just showing you how to do the walk cycle and how to do the animation, the technical part of it. But now that you know how to do that and add in keyframes, you can go through here and customize this yourself, make it look however you want. So I'm just gonna leave the walk cycle at this and you guys can refine that as much as you will. In fact, I'll probably do that off camera and before we go into the next part. But for now, I'm gonna leave it here. Let's go into our object mode. Make sure to save as you go. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in that floor because even if we add it in a camera now and we're looking at a character, it'll just be like walking on the floor and not moving anywhere. So we're gonna make the floor move relative to the character. And that's gonna give it the illusion of a loopable moving animation. I'm gonna show you exactly how we can do that and make the textures be loopable as well. Okay, so you can see here, I've just prepared a little example of what I mean by making the floor loopable. Now you can see 
when we look at it like this, it doesn't look loopable. It just keeps going back like that, back and forth. But if we were to actually, you know, zoom in or look from the top and uh, you didn't pay any attention to that bar over here, it kind of looks like it's loopable. If you looked at it like that, you see? And uh, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do and how to put a texture on that. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to delete this because this is just my little example. And what we need to do is we need to go to frame one. Remember we've got 20 frames here that we have. Um, set that at 20. Let's go shift A, let's add in a plane. We wanna make sure that plane is in the center of our world here, right in the middle of our character. And we're gonna go S2 and hit enter. So we scale it up by two. So if you press N and you go to your item, you can go over here to the transforms and you should be able to see it's a scale of two. So make sure to scale it by two. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna to come to frame one and you're gonna go I and you're gonna insert a location keyframe for this floor. Then you're gonna to come to frame 20 and you're gonna go G, X, G, Y and holding your mouse and moving it, what you're gonna do is you can move it till the end here, but you can hold the control so it snaps to the grid. So if you move it all the way till the end, it should snap right to that red line over here. See that? So right there on frame 20 and you're gonna go I and insert a location. And this is currently on a Bezier curve. So if you select both of these keyframes and you press T, make sure to make that linear. What that simply means is that it's a continuous speed. Otherwise, if it was the Bezier curve, it'll start slowly, speed up, and then ease back into a slow movement. And we don't want that because that's gonna break the, the loopability of it. So you should just have this, All right? If we now went to frame one and we selected this floor and we went Shift D to duplicate it. And then when G, Y, moving it back on the Y and then holding in control, snap it to the end here, see like that? So right there in the end. And then come over here to the keyframes, select them and then go X and delete keyframes. Now what we can do is we can hold in shift with this floor selected and select the animated floor and go control P and then go object, keep transform. So now if we go to frame one and hit the space bar, that goes along. So you can see where we're going with this. All we now have to do is give all of that the same texture. And speaking of the texture, we're gonna go over to Texture Haven. So um, it's called Polyhaven, but it has a texture section. I'll try and put a link in the description. If I forget, all you have to do is just type in Texture Haven. It'll come up with this. Uh, you can go to the wooden floor section, just click on that or just the wood. And you're gonna see a lot of these are flooring. Just find one, they're all loopable, but the one I'm gonna go with is this one right here, the kitchen wood. Um, you can use any wooden texture, any texture you want. It doesn't even have to be wood, as long as it's tileable. And um, it means that it can mesh together from all different directions. So you could tile it across the surface and it'll look seamless. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to this option. You can choose 4K if you want or 2K. And then make sure this is set to Blender. Select Blend and then go Download. I've already done that, so I'm gonna show you what that does. So in my downloads, I had this zip folder. I extracted that zip folder and I had this. Here you have a blend file called Kitchen Wood. So the cool thing is, all you have to do now is in your Blender scene, is you have to select now that floor and go to File, and then you can go to Append, then go to your downloads or wherever that Texture Haven texture went and you extracted that folder. Open that folder, click on that blend file, which will look like this. So just click on it twice. And then in here, you're gonna get all the different assets in that folder. Just go down to the material, click on that, and then you're gonna see kitchen wood, double click on it. And now if you go over to your materials here, just come to the drop down. You still have that floor selected. Just come to the drop down and select kitchen wood. Now if you press Z and you go material preview, so you're gonna now see we have this texture seamlessly added. And if you went to your UV editing, you can see that um, it's already UV unwrapped, which is good. So it's got all of the right setup here. We don't have to do anything. Just go back to the layout. All you can do now is select the extra tiles, go to your materials, go to the drop down, and just also give it that kitchen wood. And that's it. Now you can just play the animation, it all goes along. So all you have to do now at this point pretty much is select that duplicated tile Go to your top view and you can go Shift D, and I'm on frame one, by the way, make sure you're on frame one. Shift D, and then just hold in Control or Command and you can snap it and snap it right here to the end like that. So now if we go on frame one and hit the space bar, you can see it all goes along. So what you can do now is as many times as you want, you can go to frame one and go Shift D, hold in Control and just snap it. You can see it snap right in place. So I'm going Shift D, snap it, Shift D, snap it, Shift D, snap. Shift D, snap, select these ones, Shift D, snap them back here. And you can see exactly what that looks like, like that. And at the moment it doesn't look seamless, but if we were to come in here close like this and go Shift A, add in a camera. With that camera now active, you can see we have it selected. Press zero to go into camera view, G, middle mouse button, and zoom out. And then G, 
and move it up. Go to your camera settings, make the focal length really high. I'm gonna go 140 and I'm just gonna go G, middle mouse button in camera view, just zoom out a bit more. And then um, I'm just gonna double tap R to rotate my camera and move it a little bit. I'm just positioning my camera like so. And you can position it however you want. But what you can see here now is if we press, press the space bar in the camera view, it should look um, somewhat seamless. Okay, so it doesn't look quite right. So what we may have to do is just come here to the back and um, let's just go shift A, let's just add in a plane. Just move it back on Y and then go R, X, 9, 0, hit enter. S to scale it up like so and then go G, Z and just move it till it's just above the floor there. Now if you go into camera view, you see a background. And that's definitely gonna help now. Okay, so now it, you don't just see it skipping there. Now it looks seamless. In fact, if you select the camera and you go over to your camera settings, you can go over to the viewport display, go down here to the pass part out and set it all the way up to one. Now you don't see the outside. And now you can see it really does look seamless. It just looks like he's just walking the whole time. Now you can see my character is doing a little bit of a funny skip here. That's just because um, I didn't really spend that much time refining the animation. He's got a little bit of a lean, almost like he's injured. Um, but that's just me doing the tutorial and really keeping the animation basic. If it, I was gonna do this professionally, I would spend quite a bit of time really sussing out the animation, looking at some references. Um, but you guys get the idea here. I'll, I'll probably polish this anyway before I do the final render, but I'll do that off camera. But you guys now get the idea. We have finally added the material, we have the floor, and it's now technically loopable. We could render this out. If we press Z and we render, you can see this is what the scene looks like. Okay, I'm just gonna grab that background and just bring it down just a little bit more. Uh, you could also, with your camera, if you wanted to, select it and give it a focus, a depth of field. Click on the little eyedropper and select the chocolate guy. And now if you go into rendered and you bring down this f-stop, you can see the background is a bit blurred. And another thing you can do, go to your world settings. We did give it a sky texture earlier. You can come here to the sun rotation and just rotate it around so your character is being a lit like that. Uh, mess around with the strength if you want. Um, completely up to you what you want to do. Okay, but you get the idea. What I would also do is just select the background, go to the shading, click new and just give that a nice dark background, make it maybe a little bit purplish and uh, that's looking a lot better. But this is really a very simple um, version of what I did. It's pretty much the same thing as my original, but I just spent a lot more time here uh, refining things. Now what I'm gonna do, this is almost the last part. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do a little bit more refinement, setting things up just a little bit better, and then we're gonna render this out as a final final animation. I'm then gonna upload all of these um, blend files to my Patreon, but I'm also gonna be including on Patreon a bonus video, which is gonna go more um, in depth on how to do some of the sprinkles on the head over here of the character and how to do this sort of like um, cloth simulation on there as well. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching so far and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next part where we wrap all of this up.